right, everybody ready? Okay, so I'm Dr. Robin. I'm the Chief Wellness Officer at Al Mansori. So today we're going to be doing the How to Read Food Labels course at the Detox Program. Why the body's getting so toxic, where the poison's coming from in the environment, what to look out for. Okay, I was just talking to Bashir earlier. He's telling me because uh, we teach everybody that like plastic is no good for you, right? Full of, full of chemicals that are going into your plastic. And he's telling me he's switched over all to all glass now. And I think that's very good. I have, I've done that years ago. I drink out of glass. I get my water in glass. I put, I put uh, my food in glass. I bring my food to work in Pyrex glass, right? That's much better. The, stu the chemicals in the plastic, are, they affect their endocrine disruptors. And Dr. Ron will talk more about that after this one. But endoc endocrine disruptors come in and they mess with your hormones. What's the biggest problem we see with people mostly? You don't know? Obesity. Obesity. What makes you fat? Hormones. Hormones being all out of whack. Okay? That's, you got to get away from these endocrine disruptors. They're everywhere, but mostly a lot of stuff in the plastic really, really screws with your hormones. We also see a lot of hormonal cancers, prostate cancers, breast cancers, ovarian cancers, all these cancers. And a lot of, the, a lot of hormonal, uh, the hormonal cancers also affected by, uh, you know, the plastics and these endocrine disruptors, these toxins. Anyway, we'll talk more in depth about that after this. Let's first talk about the poison that's in your food. Okay, so this is the thing you need to understand. The food industry is not, they're out to make money. They're not out to make healthy food for people to live longer and be healthy. Okay, very different objective here. So when they're out to make money and sell food, they're not really going to be too concerned about how healthy the product is. And this is the problem. Chemicals and food, uh, not food, but when they study chemicals for safety, they're usually only looking at one chemical because that's the only way you can really isolate something and see how it's working. Okay, so they, try, they take a bunch of people and they give it one chemical and then they say, ah, okay, when we got to this level, everybody started to get sick. So the safety point is this. If you eat more, if you have in more than that in your body, then you're going to get sick. That's all fine. So then they say, okay, you can put this much of this chemical in the food or in the environment. They're not looking at all the chemicals that we have that we're being bombarded with. That would be a very difficult study to do because you have to have control factors and you cannot control for this. We have chemicals we don't know about in the air. We have chemicals we don't know about in our drinking water. We have chemicals we don't really, we're not really looking for in our foods. It's very difficult to study all these chemicals together. But that, so that's the big problem with studying these chemicals. So they, they have all these safety limits. Oh, it's safe for this much in your food, this much in your food, but we don't know how it is when it's all together. So that's why you see these, this, these problems arise. Okay, so basically we're experimenting with people. We're giving you these foods and then we're seeing how your health is, okay? So that's one of the issues we don't really know. Okay, so now when we're looking at food packages, the front of the, lab the, front of the label, the front of the package, this is kind of to grab your attention and make you buy it. Okay, as you can see, this one is directed towards, this targeted uh, towards children. K children love bright, colorful things. Okay, and they can put whatever they really want on the, look, this one says natural fruit flavors. What does that mean? Does anybody know what that means? It means absolutely nothing. They, there's no legal term for that, so they can put that where, the term natural means absolutely nothing. Any food can use it. It mean, well, there's no legal term for it. So you can use it to mean anything. So people say, oh, this is natural. It must be good for me. No, not really. <laughs> what does it mean? Okay, so this is why we're having this class too, so you can kind of understand some of the terms that mean stuff and some that they can use to trick you, right? Okay, so that's the front of the package. Um, 
You'll, also, you'll see a lot of things like this. Ooh, USDA organic. This has its own, this has its own issues, okay? There's a lot of organic laws. They start, they start making them a lot more uh, um, so that you can get away with stuff that's not technically organic. So there's a lot of problems with this USDA organic. Uh, these companies, they, could, they, they also, it's all about money with these companies, with these groups, okay? So you pay them enough, you can get your stuff to say it's organic, even when it's not, pretty much. That's how it goes. They're starting some new labeling now. Uh, I forget the name of it. It's just starting. It's in its infancy, but hopefully in a few years it'll be up and running well, where it's a private company that's going to be testing for real organic. And then once they start that, and it's not government owned. So once they start that, I think in a few years we'll, be, we'll have a much truer definition of what's really, truly organic. Uh, but there's a lot of problems with this. So is it good to get this? It's better than buying non-organic? Yes. But is it truly organic? The problem with that too is things go float in the air. You have no control. So an organic farmer who's next door to a farmer who's spraying all these pesticides, you think he's going to keep all the pesticides are going to stay on this side of the fence? No, they don't. So even though this guy isn't using pesticides, this stuff is flying over in the air and still landing on the food. Is it a lot less pesticide than the one they're spraying on it? Yes, for sure. But are you getting completely free of pesticide? No. Okay? So even this is what I'm saying. Even this has its issues. Zero trans fat. There's tricks to be able to say that. Okay? You could still have a product that has some trans fat in it, and they can still put this label on the front. There's a percentage. It's like less than, uh, I forgot now, it's been so long since I looked at it. It's like less than like uh, 0.5 milligrams per serving. And so what they'll do is you may eat the whole thing, but then they'll break it into so many servings so that it'll look like it has less than 0.5 milligrams so then they can legally say this. So they'll break one thing that you, if you're going to eat it in one serving, they may break it down to four. So then they can say, oh, yeah, but per serving, it's less than 0.5 milligrams. So I can legally say there's no trans fat, even though there is trans fat in it. There's tricks that they do, that these people do to, to trick you. Sugar-free, yeah, okay, sugar gives things flavor, right? If you eat something that's got sugar and it tastes good, all right? So they'll put sugar free but they'll be using a lot of chemicals in its place that are very bad for you so this thing's fat free okay so fat free also gives stuff flavor right so if they take the fat out of it the stuff tastes like cardboard so fat free people think fat free is so healthy but a lot of times fat free will be sky high in sugar to make it taste better so this is what you, you got to be aware of these kind of things, right? We will, basically, you're going to look at the labels when you're looking at any packaged foods, all right? You always want to look at the label. And I'm going to show you some examples in a little while of things you wouldn't even think to look at the label, all right? How many of you read labels when you go buy milk? You look at the label on milk? Expiry date, that's it. People, don't, I'm going to show you in a minute why you should look at the label even on a milk package. Okay? You never know what these people are putting in there. And they put stuff in and you're like, shot, why is this in there? Dried fruit. Who's seen, who eats dried fruit? Do you know that they add extra sugar to dried fruit? Why do they do that? What's the purpose? They don't need to. Fruit is sweet. I had one guy come and ask me, Dr. Robin, I like ban dried banana chips. And he said, I've been all over Abu Dhabi. I can't find one bag that doesn't have added sugar. I said, you're kidding me. Dried banana chips? Banana Why chips, do you? They're, they're already they sweet. Salt. 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 Sugar. No, it's sugar. Because I started looking. And every store I went to, every single bag of banana chips had a bunch of added sugar. Every single one. I have not found one yet that doesn't have added sugar. 
Bananas are already sweet. Why do we need to add more sugar onto it? And when you're drawing it, the process of drawing it preserves it. So there's, you, there's not a re you don't need to add sugar to it. So, but this one I'm telling you, you need to open your eyes. If you're trying to avoid sugar and you're getting a bunch of dried fruit, you're getting extra sugar that you don't know you're getting. This is what I'm trying to tell you. You have to read the label you, to see this. Okay? Okay, so serving size. This is what they use to confuse you, to get around the, all the legal rules, okay? They are supposed to be changing this. They're trying to change the rules to make them have to do the serving size that actually represents what you're actually going to eat in a serving. Most people are going to drink that in one sitting, right? They used to put on their two servings, right? You know what I'm saying? Or you get a little personal pizza. You're going to eat the whole thing. And then on the box it says four servings. So one serving is one slice. So the, numbers will be lower. so the numbers are lower. This is how they trick you. So you look on here. Most people don't look at the serving size. But then when you look at the serving size, away, oh my God, there's four of those in one. So now multiply all of those times four. And then you're like, oh, actually that is bad. <laughs> But that's how they trick you, and the, they, they're trying to change this rule. I think it was changed, but I'm not sure if it's implemented yet, that the serving size now has to accurately reflect what you would actually eat in reality. Then you should be aware of serving size, because this is how they trick you. This is how they get around the laws. Like the law says you have to have less than 0.5 milligrams of trans fat to say that this product has no trans fat. So if in four servings they have two milligrams, they'll break it, they'll, instead of saying one serving, in, if one serving they have two milligrams, instead of breaking, instead of saying, yes, we have trans fat, they'll break it down into four servings so that they can say it has zero trans fat, which is a lie. You see what I'm saying? Does everybody understand me? Yeah. It's a trick. It's how to get around things. So just have that in your understanding, but we're trying, they're trying to make that so they can't do that. Calories. Okay, so calories is, this is your energy that you're getting from food. People really look at this if they're, if they're on a weight loss program. And what I'm telling you is this is a very outdated way of losing weight. When I do weight loss programs with people, we do not count calories because it doesn't really work, okay? I tell people, do not look at this. This is going to make you crazy if you're sitting here counting calories. It doesn't work. You would think it would work. It makes sense. Calories, if you eat less calories, you should lose weight. Less calories than what you're burning off, right? But it doesn't really work that way. All calories are not created equal. A calorie of carbohydrate is not the same as a calorie of fat, okay? So I tell people, don't bother. Don't bother with this. This is not really what you should be looking at. What you need to look at is what kind of food you're eating. If you're eating healthy foods, you do not need to count calories. Percent daily value. Remember we talked about this yesterday. The percent daily value. Okay, so where does this come from? It basically comes from, it's the amount of a certain uh, vitamin that you need to eat in a day just to stay alive. Now, does staying alive equate to being healthy? No. Because a lot of people are very deficient. They need to eat a lot more than that to be healthy. Okay? When I treat people, I give them 10 times some of this, this amounts. Because that's what they need an effective dose. Okay? So don't bother with this. Percent daily value is just a bunch of information you don't need to look at. Okay? So I say ignore it. Ignore that too. If you're going to read a label, you need to spend the time reading the ingredients. Okay? That's the most important thing, the ingredients. You need to know what's in your food. Remember yesterday we talked about some items that uh, we wanted to avoid. Aspartame, MSG, right? Trans fat, partially hydrogenated oil. If you want to know if a package contains those things, you need to read the ingredients. That's the only way you're going to know. All right? Now, what you, need to, what you need to understand is the ingredients are listed in the order of how much is in that product. 
So the ingredient that has the most, that makes up the most of that product is going to be number one. It's going to be listed first. And then they're listing descending, the descending quantities. And that's very important because this is another way that they use to trick you. So what we'll see, we'll see some examples in a minute, is they don't want you to know how much sugar is really in the product. So they will take, even though that product is mostly sugar, they will, they will uh, put the sugar under three or four different names so that they don't have to put it as the first ingredient. So you'll look and you'll say, oh, this ingredient is all corn. And then they'll, the next one will be, say, sugar. And then they'll have, you go further down and they have three more other names for sugar. But when you add all that sugar up into sugar, it would actually be the first ingredient. And we'll see, we'll see that happen. But this is how, this is another way they used to trick you. Okay? All right, so trans fat, partially hydrogenated oil. This is one of the big bad ones we want to make sure we're not eating. Remember, I said it's like eating plastic. Okay, also the artificial sweeteners, we talked about this yesterday as well. The aspartame, sucralose, equal, splenda. You want to stay away from those. Any little packets that are colored, we don't want to use that. And then, of course, MSG. We discussed all of these yesterday, so I'm going to touch on them, uh, how you identify them in the food. Okay? So the other one you want to be aware of is how much sugar is in your product. Right? You want to know, how much sugar am I getting? So remember I said they use different names to call sugar. People don't know that. They see sugar, sugar. They don't realize all these other names are also sugar. So what's sugar? Anything with O-S-E. Okay, sucrose, O-S-E, glucose, O-S-E, fructose, dextrose, maltose. Anything with O-S-E means sugar, okay? Now, corn syrup and corn syrup solids, which is also known as maltodextrin. This is a big one you're going to see on everything, maltodextrin. This, this is yucky because maltodextrin is a corn sugar. It's a sugar, which it's also part corn. Corn is the most genetically modified uh, ingredient in the world. If you don't know anything about GMO, GMO means genetically modified organism. It basically, scientists have come in and they've messed with the genes, the DNA. The problem with that, when we eat food, it becomes part of our DNA. So when they're messing with DNA of food, we eat it. Now that DNA is becoming part of our DNA, and it start, we're starting to see major problems, cancer, all kinds of issues from GMO foods. Okay? Now the company that produces the GMOs, they've paid a lot of money to keep all the science hush-hush, but it's coming out now how bad it is. But unfortunately, GMOs are everywhere now. But corn, you, I don't think you can, it's very hard to get corn that is not GMO. So that's one of the reasons we want to keep away from maltodextrin is the corn part of it. But the other part of it is the sugar. So just remember that sugar corn, okay? And this one's really bad. Really, really, really bad. It's worse than sugar. High fructose corn syrup. If you go to U.S., this is in everything in the U.S. And it goes in and it hurts your liver. So this stuff, this is really, really bad. This is what's making all the kids fat right now. We have a huge obesity epidemic with children. Why? They having this all day long, high fructose corn syrup. Okay, so these are the things you need to look for on the label. All right? Okay, so that's all your sugars. Okay, so now watch out for the hidden sugars. Make sure you're always reading the label. All right. Uh, also, look out, which I said earlier, any, anything that says low fat or non-fat, guarantee high sugar. So back to the trans fat. We discussed what trans fat was yesterday. Remember, it's like a plastic. It's like eating plastic. This stuff is terrible for you. How do we know it's on a label? Is it going to say under the ingredients trans fat? No, it does not. Of course, because that would be making it too easy for you. It's going to say partially hydrogenated. Okay, hydrogenated. That's remember we said they take a oil at um, 
which is liquid at room temperature, bomb it with hydrogen, and we get hydrogenated. You might also see fractionated, but usually it's hydrogenated. Okay? It's also, okay, so that's trans fat. You'll also see vegetable oil on the label is also trans fat. Vegetable shortening, or now we're seeing modified palm oil, which we think they're, being, they're saying to uh, hide the trans fat now. Okay? Be careful. This stuff, the, one of the worst things, they know it's bad, and they're saying, okay, we'll give it 10 years to get it out of the food. So maybe in 10 years, hopefully, it'll be out of all of our food. But till then, it's in a lot of our food. Okay? Where do you find it? Margarine. Fake, any fake butter products. Okay? Crisco and shortening. Cookies, crackers, peanut butter. Who eats peanut butter? That should be healthy, right? Have you read to see if there's trans fat in there? Nope. Are you going to do that when you go home? Okay, they shouldn't have it in there, but read the label just in case. Candy. Pastries, the little uh, croissants they serve at all the little business things, full of trans fat. Butter flavored microwave popcorn, Cool Whip, potato chips, non-dairy creamers, uh, and most frozen foods full of trans fat. Also included, which you will not find a label, fast foods, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Burger King, McDonald's. Okay? Be careful with this stuff, guys. What did we say about corn? Corn's the number one genetically modified thing. Don't eat corn. Popcorn included. Yeah, this, this is killing people. Slowly. It's slowly poisoning us. All right, I want to show you this. This is a label I found for a non-dairy creamer. How many of you put creamer in your coffee? A lot of people put creamer in the coffee, right? Let's read this label. Ingredients. Number one ingredient means it's the most, it uh, makes up the most quantity of this, of this package, right? What does it say? Corn syrup solids. What's that? Sugar. That one's sugar. Corn syrup solids. It's a maltodextrin. That's the other name for it. Remember we said it's a corn sugar. Do we want to stay away from that? Yes. Okay. Look again. Number one ingredient. Corn syrup solids, which is a corn sugar. Number two ingredient, partially hydrogenated soybean oil. What is that? That's your trans fat. Read the next thing. Contains 2% or less of each of the following. So the majority of that is sugar and trans fat. Do you think this is a good creamer to use? Absolutely not. This is crap, right? This is junk. Do not eat this. Okay? Read your label. Okay. Talk about the artificial sweeteners. This is what we want. We talked about aspartame, how it crosses the blood-brain barrier and attacks your nervous tissue, right? So this is stuff we want to stay away from. So aspartame, some of the, the artificial sweeteners, aspartame, the sucralose, which is the Splenda. Aspartame is the blue, the blue packet. Splenda yellow packet, sucralose. Also, another name I'm starting to see a lot, acephasulfame potassium or acephasulfame K. I am seeing this a lot. People don't realize because everybody's starting to become educated about what aspartame is, so they're starting to not buy products with aspartame. So they, the food company has decided, let's switch the name. It's, it's very similar. It's a similar product. So now they're calling it acephasulfame K, Nobody knows that that's aspartame. I've seen it in protein powders here. I have people say, how's this protein powder? And I'm like, it's full of aspartame. What do you mean? It doesn't say aspartame. No, it says acephasulfame K. Okay, MSG. Now, the MSG we talked about yesterday, right? We said the monosodium glutamate. This is what's in the Chinese food. This is what, uh, it excites your taste buds, right? It's a flavor enhancer. Okay, so this, people don't even realize this. What happens when you're eating this stuff, in, the, in how the body works, when you're a normal healthy person, when they're eating food, their body releases a hormone, it goes to the brain and says, stop eating, I'm full. And the brain says, okay, and tells the rest of the body, stop eating, I'm full. Okay? Now, 
When you're eating food full of this aspartame and MSG and all these chemicals, that goes to the brain and shuts that off. Remember, who, who was talking about the guy with the big stomach that could eat uh, Musa? Yeah. Remember, you talk, I guarantee you that guy, this was shut off in his head. He could not tell himself when he was full. So he would just keep eating, 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 eating. What causes that is this stuff. You eating MSG all the time is going to the brain and saying, you're not, you're fine, you're not full, keep eating. This is how you end up with people that can eat all these huge plates. None of us need to eat that much. None of us. That's so ridiculous. Okay? But what does it? These things, okay? All right, so that's the MSG. How to find MSG on a label? Sometimes it will say monosodium glutamate. Most of the times it uses these other words. Okay? So, autolyzed yeast, yeast extract, yeast food, yeast nutrient, all the yeast ones, has monosodium glutamate in it. Glutamate, glutamic acid, that's pretty easy. Calcium caseinate, hydrolyzed protein, you'll see this a lot. This means it's got MSG. Sodium castanate, textured protein, monopotassium, gelatin. Okay, so this is what you'll see. You'll, that hydrolyzed protein you see a lot, and sometimes the autolyzed yeast as well. I see that quite often as well. So just know that, just kind of be familiar with some of these terms, and I'll show you some of these examples in just a second. Some people are severely uh, reactive to MSG, so severe that even natural MSG they have to stay away from. This is a list of the natural MSG. This is made naturally. If you don't have a problem with MSG, you can eat these no problem. If you do have a severe problem, then you have to stay away from this stuff too. I, you know, um, uh, most of you probably don't have an issue, but this is for those who are having a major problem with MSG. Okay, very rare, some people. Okay. Okay, other additives you want to look for. These are just as bad. Most of these cause cancer. Okay, so the synthetic food dyes. If you have children, these are the ones you want to avoid because these are, this is in all the children's foods. Why? Children's like, children like colors. They want to eat colorful food, right? Blue, pink, yellow, green. How do we get that? That's not natural. You have to put these food dyes in there. M&Ms, right? Full of this stuff. This stuff is very, this stuff is linked to childhood cancers. Okay. Blue number one, blue number two, red dye number three and number 40, yellow number six, and yellow tartrazine. And we'll see these in a lot of products. Also, soy lecithin, okay? We call it soy sludge. Full of pesticides, all right? This one, you'll see in quite a, few project, uh, quite a few products. Soy is the number two genetically modified um, product. First one is corn, number two is soy. Those are the two that I really, really try to avoid as much as possible because these are all genetically modified. But soy lecithin, you'll see this in a lot of stuff. You can't always avoid it, but try. Potassium bromate, this is in bread. Potassium sorbate everywhere, BHA, BHT, this is a bad antioxidant that affects your nervous system. Sodium sulfite, anybody ever have a glass of wine and all of a sudden their, whole, their face goes red? That's usually from too much sulfates in the uh, wine. So it's, the sulfate. it's the sulfates. It's a bad reaction, and you'll see this very often, people have a huge reaction. Uh, I had a glass... I don't even drink wine, but a while back I had a glass of, uh, it was a Chilean wine. Chile, Chile has no uh, regulations on sulfates. And I'm not even kidding you, I had one sip, and I, from here to here, immediately flash red. It was like I was on fire. Oh, so I need to drink another one. No, you just don't notice it anymore. Everybody else is like, man, this guy's beat like a tomato. And you're just like, I don't feel anything. It's just warming up. But this is what I'm saying. So there's, there's a lot of countries that have regulation. They only allow a limited amount of the sulfates in there. So you got to be careful, okay? So these are things you want to look out for, guys. All right. GMOs we talked about, the genetically modified. Stay away from these. Uh, corn and soy, biggest ones. 
the sodium nitrates. That's what they put in meat to make it look pink. You know when you go buy meat in the deli? It's usually not that color. That's what, and this is very bad for you. It's in baked, uh, well, you don't eat that anyway. Yeah, so lots of processed meats. And then the last one people love to eat, and I'm tired of telling people, canola oil. This is so bad for you. This is as bad as eating trans fat. Canola oil. This is the oil that everybody loves to eat because everybody says it's, it's like uh, omega-3. Yeah, but the minute... This is so processed. This is one of the oils. It takes like 20 steps to process this. It's bleached. It's put in ammonia. There's so much stuff done to this oil. It's an omega-3, but the minute you heat it, it turns into trans fat. How are we going to know this? For example, I take omega-3. Uh, omega oh, it, you're taking fish oils. Fish oil. Yeah, that's, that, that's different. Canola oil is a cooking oil. Yeah, but it's in food products. How do you know if it's in a food product? How do you know? You read the label. Come on, Chris. Chris said, I don't know. You read the label. That's what this class is about. You have to turn the package over and read the label. And it will say canola oil. Okay? Lots of salad dressings have this. Okay. We're coming up to the pictures. Hold on. We're coming. We're coming. No? Okay. So this one too, carrageenan. Who's heard of this one? The carrageenan. Anybody? I guarantee you everybody eats this probably almost every day. Where do we find this? Where do we find this? In your milk. <laughs> In yogurt, a lot of yogurts have this in there. Even the healthy organic yogurts have this in it. This is very bad because it causes leaky gut. Remember yesterday we talked about leaky gut? We discussed, remember I said when you're eating all this stuff, the gut gets inflamed? And we have very bad health issues after that. This is one of them that contributes to it. It, it, uh, it really, um, it, but it, <laughs> This is in a lot of dairy products. You got to look out for this one. I see this all the time and I get really annoyed because it's in the healthy ones. Okay. Causes lots, people always think they're allergic to milk because of this one. A lot of people think I can't have milk or dairy and it's usually the carrageenan that they're reacting to, not, not the dairy product itself. Okay. Now let's go to this one. You'll see this a lot on the label. It's called natural flavoring. You all see this one before? What is it? Well, I can't really tell you, but you are allowed to read that definition for yourself. Does that mean anything to you guys? The essential oil, only resin, essence, or extractive protein, hydrolysate, distillate, or any product of roasting, heating, or enzymolysis, which contains the flavoring constituents derived from a spice, fruit, fruit juice, vegetable, vegetable juice, edible yeast, herb, bark, bud, root, leaf, or similar plant material, meat, seafood, poultry, eggs, dairy products, or fermentation products thereof, whose significant function in food is flavoring rather than nutrition. Does that mean anything? It's made by flavorists in a lab. One of these, one of these is made from a beaver's butt. Like, have you heard about that one? <laughs> It's natural. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying, okay? They blend together natural chemicals or synthetic chemicals to create a flavor. And it hides MSG and other artificial sweeteners. This is why you have to be careful. You may read a product and say, oh, it's, just, it's good stuff in the natural flavoring. We don't know what's in it. We have no idea. No freaking clue. So this, and you'll see this, this is in everything, natural flavor. Okay, so let's look at some labels, guys. I don't know if y'all can read this. this. The mayonnaise I'm showing you, I want to show you for this reason, because a lot of people ask about this. But if you see these numbers, or sometimes you'll see an E. It's an E number. You see 1403, 1422. You see these numbers? Okay. So in U.S., 
The law is you cannot just put a number, you have to put the name. So in US, they'll put the name with the number behind it, and I think they do that to confuse people. So that somebody looks, oh, there's a bunch of numbers, I don't know what that means. So then they don't read it. Because, you know, if it's too much, people will just ignore it. So I think they do that on purpose. Now, in UK, they're allowed to put the number instead of the name. So then that means you have to go look up the number to see what it is. This is a pain in the butt. Okay? I refuse to buy any product that puts numbers instead of a name. Because for me, I'm not going to take the time to go. They're doing that on purpose because they don't want you to know what's in their product. So if I see, if I get a product and it's got a bunch of E numbers and no names, I put it back and go get another one and get something else. The more you spend your money on something, the more you're promoting it. If you keep going to KFC every day, KFC is going to continue to make trans fatty chicken because people keep buying it. If you stop spending your money there, they'll stop making it, right? So don't buy products like that. Or if you can, if you want to waste your time and Google every E number, sure. But who has the time to do that? Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Okay, look at this. Nature Valley, sweet and salty granola bar. This should be healthy, right? All right, let's read about it. Okay, ingredients. Number one, almonds. Okay, that's a good ingredient, right? Almonds. Number two, whole grain oats. Right? Almonds, whole grain oats. So the majority of this should be almonds and whole grain oats, right? Okay, next one. High maltose, O-S-E. What does that mean? Sugar. Sugar. The next one. Corn syrup, what does that mean? Sugar. Sugar. The next one. Sugar. Sugar, what does that mean? Sugar. You see what I'm trying to tell you? If you put these all into one thing and saying sugar, this would be number one. So this product is actually mostly sugar. Do you understand? You see how they did that? Rice flour, palm kernel oil, whole grain wheat, fructose, more sugar, honey roasted almond butter, almonds honey, which is a, honey is a better sugar. Maltodextrin, what was that? Corn sugar, corn sugar, which we want to avoid. Palm oil, uh, mixed tocopherols, canola oil. No, we want to stay away from that. More maltodextrin. Salt, soy lecithin, wasn't that another ingredient we wanted to stay away from? Soy sludge, uh, reduced minerals, whey, non-fat milk, barley malt, extract, baking soda, natural flavor. Ooh, what is that? We don't know. We have no idea. Uh, mixed tocopherols, blah, blah. Okay. All right, y'all getting the hang of this? You see what we're doing now? Yeah, okay. How about this? Rice cakes. This is what all the health nuts eat, right? This is very healthy, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so let's look at what we got. Whole grain brown rice. Okay. Corn. GMO corn. I don't eat corn, but if you want, if you want corn in your rice cakes, go for it. Okay. Seasoning blend. Corn flour. Oh, more corn. Tomato powder, salt, sugar. Dextrose. Autolyzed yeast extract. What was that? Autolyzed yeast, MSG, hydrolyzed canola proteins, more MSG. No, this one's hydrolyzed, not hydrogenated. So more hydro hydrolyzed proteins, uh, MSG, citric acid, hydrogenated soybean oil, trans fats. Okay. Um, uh, natural, more natural flavors. Lactose, which is a milk sugar, uh, soy lecithin. Okay, so do you think this is healthy? No, it's not. Okay, it's full of trans fat, GMO corn, sugar, MSG. MSG. They have to put the MSG because nobody likes to eat rice cakes. <laughs> Who eats this one? Corn flakes. With milk. Oh, we know. We know who eats it. Ingredient, milled corn, sugar, malt flavoring, high fructose corn syrup, another sugar. So, but mostly it's, mo it's a lot of sugar, high fructose corn syrup, which is, affects your liver, right? 
Okay, so that's your cereal. So your cereal's not very good either. Okay, what about, oh, this one. Wait, I want you to read the front part of this package. Made with real veggies. That must be good, right? Real vegetables. Roasted veggie tortilla chips made with real veggies. Y'all believe it? Let's read. Okay. But you may not believe it because you have this class, but most people who haven't had this class, they're going to say, oh, this is good for me. It's made with real veggies. They're going to believe this, right? Okay. So go to the top. Whole grain corn. So it's mostly corn, which of course is GMO. Sunflower oil, not really a good oil, but it's okay. Dried red and green bell peppers. Corn is actually, I don't even think, I think corn, is it a vegetable or is it a carb? Uh, is it classified as a vegetable? It's a grain. Yeah. grain. It's a grain. yeah. Grain. So corn is, it's not even a vegetable. Dried red and green bell pepper. So the only vegetable in this is the dried red and green bell pepper. Got it? Okay. Now, 2% less of toasted corn germ, evaporated cane syrup. What's that? Sugar. sugar. Maltodextrin. Sugar. Corn sugar. Salt. More sugar. Cheese blend. Uh, cheddar cheese. Cheese culture salt. Enzymes weight. Partially hydrogenated soybean oil. Trans fat. Whey protein concentrate, lactose, maltodextrin, salt, sodium phosphate. Natural flavor. What is that? We don't know. Buttermilk powder, buckwheat, sorghum, millet, onion, amaranth whey, protein concentrate, MSG. Quinoa, broccoli, tomatoes, Romano cheese, corn oil. Is that good? Corn oil? Nope. Hydrolyzed wheat, wheat, uh, wheat protein. Hydrolyzed. No, hydrolyzed. No. Hydrolyzed, MSG. Hydrolyzed is MSG, hydrogenated. Remember, trans fat is hydrogen. Hydrolyzed, MSG. Oh, got it? Okay, where was I? Now I lost it. Oh, uh, autolyzed yeast. More MSG. Uh, citric acid, which is something that's grown on GMO mold. But we'll, we'll not talk about that today. Partially hydrogenated soybean oil, more trans fat. Okay, yellow number six. Yellow number five. Okay, modified butter oil. Modified. What did we say that said again? Trans fat. Okay, dehydrated but sodium citrate, natural flavor. And preserved by potassium sorbate, which is cancerous. Do you want to eat this? You got to, this is what I'm telling you, even though it looks like it's healthy, you got to really read and look into it and you'll see a lot of times it's not. Okay? Who drinks Almariah Al milk? Let's, I never thought I had to read a milk label. I was wrong. Look at this one. Water, milk solids. Milk fat, vegetable oil. Who puts vegetable oil in their milk? Is that, that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in milk before, ever. You guys want to drink vegetable oil in your milk? This is why I'm saying you need to read your label and find out what's really in there. Okay? Look, here's the E numbers. See, these at least put stabilize. They're not telling you what it is. It's a stabilizer. You got to go look it up. There's two of them. And then th this is all vitamins. These are added vitamins, which are synthetic vitamins anyway, so you don't really want to get that. But I mean, vegetable oil in your milk? Come on, guys. Most milk has no oil in it. Why do you need to go buy oil, uh, milk with added vegetable oil? That's just ridiculous. It's like the dried fruit when they go add sugar to it. It's already sweet. This is, but this is what I'm saying. You have to read your labels. The fat could be, could be. Why would you take a natural product, take the fat out, and add other fat to it? That's so stupid. No, it's not. It is. No, no, no. It is because it's making you sick. Why would you take something that God made perfectly perfect and totally screw it up? 
You understand what I'm saying? Raw milk, much better for you than homogenized pasteurized milk? Yes. They're afraid because it could have bacteria in it? Yes, anything could have bacteria in it. But they, they homogenize and pasteurize it to get, take all the bacteria out so it doesn't kill you. But I know a lot of people drink raw milk all the time and perfectly, perfectly fine. Yeah, if you have a cow or goat, you can drink raw milk. Yeah. No, but there's a lot of people who live on farms. Yeah. Drinking raw milk, drinking raw milk is amazing. It's so, it's ten times better for you than drinking homogenized, pasteurized stuff. All right, yogurt. Who eats yogurt? Oh, we all love yogurt. All right, is yogurt healthy? Let's take a look. It should be right. Ingredients: cultured grade A non-fat milk, water. Strawberry sugar, there's a sugar, fructose, sugar. two sugars, contains less, so this may, if you put these together, you probably have mostly sugar in this, contains less than 1% of modified cornstarch, natural flavor, we don't know what that is, carrageenan, what was that? That's the one that causes leaky gut. Car this is the one that's in, you'll find a lot of this in your milk products. Yogurts, milks. This is very bad, carrageenan. Uh, carmine and black carrot juice concentrate. When you see juice concentrate, that's also another term for sugar. Um, sodium citrate, potassium sorbate. We said cancer causing, yeah? Okay, guys, what about this one? Anybody eat this one? Oh, I knew you eat this one. So, look at this one. Trans fat, zero. You see how it says zero? Okay, see, this is why I tell you don't bother to read this because I don't trust this. Always read the ingredients. Why? We may find something different. All right, let's look. So, ingredients, corn, vegetable oil, which we said is trans fat, right? Contains one more of the following, corn, soybean, and or sunflower oil, which none of those are good. So, salt, cheddar cheese, cultured milk, salt, enzyme, maltodextrin, corn sugar, uh, wheat flour, wait, monosodium glutamate, ooh, more MSG. Yeah, buttermilk solids, Romano cheese from cow's milk, Blah, blah, blah. Whey protein concentrate. I think that's also MSG. Partially hydrogenated soybean and cottonseed oil. What is that? Is that true? No. Okay. That, and we got this as one. This came from the Doritos itself. So for them to be able to put trans fat, I don't know how they're putting zero grams here. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, corn flour, disodium phosphate, lactose, natural and artificial flavor. What is that? We don't know. Could be beaver's butt. Very likely beaver's butt. <laughs> okay, so uh, dextrose, that's a sugar. Tomato powder, spices, lactic acid, artificial color including yellow 6, yellow 5, and red 40. Okay, so you're getting the nice cancer-causing colors in your Doritos. Citric acid, that I told you earlier, this, I'm just, just an added one, but that's from mold, GMO mold. Okay. Ooh, sugar, garlic powder, red and green bell pepper powder, sodium concentrate, disodium inosinate, disodium blah, 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 non-fat milk solids, whey protein isolate, all that uh, is uh, MSG, and corn syrup solids. Okay, Chips Ahoy cookies. Oh, uh, yeah, very healthy, right? So I'm just going to point out some soy lecithin. We said soy sludge. Hydrogenated soybean oil, some trans fat. High fructose corn syrup, bad sugar, right? Natural colors, artificial colors. Okay, and this one, this is the last one I'm going to show you. I get this one from the grocery stores here. It's called Rivita. Okay, ingredients. Whole grain, rye, flour, and salt. What? 
That's it. Three ingredients. Shocking, right? Whole grain rye flour. Sorry, two ingredients. Rye. Rye is like a grain. I'm showing you this to show you there are healthy things out there. You have to read the label. Okay, but this is, a, this, is, this is only two ingredients, and you can pronounce them, and you know what they are. That is something you should buy, right? That's better than buying other crap. Rivita is actually very delicious. It's a really good, they've got pumpkin seed Rivita, they've got sesame seed Rivita, which I love. I have sesame seed Rivita with some avocado, smushed avocado and lime on top. This is much healthier for you than these other crappy crackers and stuff, yeah? Acrylamide, what is this? This causes cancer and birth defects. Where does acrylamide come from? It's not an ingredient they're putting in food. It's a reaction when you burn carbohydrate. So if you take a piece of bread and you toast it and it's almost burnt, that is full of acrylamide. Okay? This is on potatoes, burnt potatoes, burnt bread, okay? This is a label in a McDonald's in California. What does this say? Chemicals known to cause cancer or birth defects or other reproductive harm may be present in the foods or beverages sold or served here. Cooked potatoes that have been browned, such as french fries, hash browns, and baked potatoes contain acrylamide, a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer. Other foods sold here, such as hamburger buns, biscuits, and coffee also contain acrylamide, but generally in lower concentrations than fried potatoes. Acrylamide is not added to our foods, but is cr created whenever potatoes or certain other foods are browned. The FDA has not advised people to stop eating it, but just be aware, okay? I just wanted to show you this to show you that, okay, now even they're forcing McDonald's to post this notice because it's, that, it's, it's making that much of a problem. If you're eating healthy all the time and you eat some brown bread, is that gonna be a big issue? No. If you're eating unhealthy all the time and you eat brown burned bread every day, is that gonna be an issue for you? Yes. Okay, so BPA is something else. I think Dr. Ron might talk about BPA, but this is in canned foods. It lines, it's the lining of cans. How many foods do you get in cans? You get like beans, vegetables, tuna, you get all kinds of stuff in cans, right? So they did a study. They took some people. They fed them this canned food for three or four days, and then they, they tested them to see how much BPA came out, and they had a huge, huge rise in BPA, meaning they're taking it into the body from the cans in our food. They're trying now to make it, they're phasing it out so in like the next five years, all cans will not be using this anymore, but right now some cans are still using it. In U.S., you can find a lot of cans and they'll say BPA-free. Here, I haven't seen that. What I'm just telling you, don't eat a lot of canned food every day. Eat mo mostly fresh. Once a week, twice a week of a can, that's fine. Just don't be eating canned food every day, okay? Okay? Okay. All right, now, my la what I want to leave you with, if you go to Organic Food and Cafe, don't think you don't have to read any labels. Half their stuff is bad. I go in there and I get so annoyed because half their stuff, oh, it's organic. Does that mean it's great for you? No. Like their, their yogurt, full of carrageenan. Organic yogurt, full of carrageenan. Greek yogurt, Greek yogurt usually is very good. The Amy's brand, I think, is really good. No, Rachel's. Rachel's. Organic Greek yogurt. She doesn't add any extra junk in it. All right, and then what can you do about this? Stop buying food that has all these bad ingredients in it. If you stop buying it and everybody stops buying it, they'll stop selling it. They're only selling stuff that you're going to buy, right? You go keep eating a Kentucky Fried Chicken, Kentucky Fried Chicken is going to stay in business. They know their food's bad for you. They know that. You don't think Coca-Cola doesn't know that its drinks are bad? Why do they keep making it? Because people keep buying it. They're still getting rich. You understand? So it's up to us as consumers to put our money where our mouth is. Stop buying stuff that's unhealthy for you. Okay? What should you eat? Uh, we talked about this yesterday. You should eat a diet full of whole foods. 
lots of vegetables, lots of fruits, lots of whole grains, and good meats, healthy meats. Okay? Uh, this is just kind of a list of good things to eat. Fruits, vegetables, or fermented vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds, cashews, pistachios, sesame, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, yogurt, healthy yogurt, not crappy yogurt. Cheese, a good, a good feta cheese or goat cheese. These are really nice cheeses for you. Beans, like black beans, uh, you know, uh, green beans, lentils, dal, uh, tofu, non-GMO tofu, though. If you're going to get tofu, if you're vegetarian and eat tofu, non-GMO, because that's made from soy. Eggs, eggs are fine. Natural meats, organic, free-range, grass-fed meat and fish. But be careful, fish can have mercury issues as well. Okay guys? Alright, so any questions about food labels? <laughs>